Some part-time jobs could be said to be, well, boring. Never for Chris Schmidt and his team, though. To get ahead in this job, you have to be constantly alert, ready to make instant decisions. Then follow through with aggressive action to get the job done. Go over and check Hillis. Okay. Charlie team. Chen, move five meters up to possession, covering 12 o'clock. It may be just a simulation at this stage, but for Master Corporal Schmidt and thousands of other men and women across Canada, it's no game. It is a way of life as well as a job. A job that is becoming increasingly important. have passed four generations of Calgarians, each one heir to a proud tradition of service. For more than 80 years, Calgarians have placed jobs and professions on hold, bidden loved ones farewell, and taken up arms to defend not so much the territory of Canada, but what Canada stands for. These citizen soldiers are members of the Calgary Highlanders Regiment, a unit of the militia, which is Canada's part-time or reserve army. Yet the Calgary Highlanders did not begin as a kilted regiment. They were once known as the 103rd Calgary Rifles. They did the same job as Highlanders do today, infantry. They were foot soldiers, the ones who take and hold the ground. Created in 1910 and bloodied in the trenches of World War I, the 103rd were part of the 10th Battalion, Canadian Expeditionary Force. Tenacious and determined, they soon earned the unofficial title of the Fighting Tenth. April 22, 1915, near the Belgian village of St. Julian, the 10th Battalion were ordered to counterattack German positions following the first poison gas attack of the war. Moving through a stand of oak trees, known as Kitchener's Wood, the men of the 10th routed a stubborn enemy. Ill-prepared for chemical warfare, the 10th Battalion paid a terrible price. From this hastily planned action at St. Julian to the cauldron of death, known as Vimy Ridge, the men of the 103rd Calgary Rifles found themselves time and again at the pressure point in that insanity known as the Great War. The oak leaf emblem worn by Highlanders today honors those who fought and died in the woods of St. Julian. 1939, and clouds of conflict began to gather once more on European horizons. It was time to follow the regimental colors out of Moata armories again, into four years of seemingly endless training. The Calgary Highlanders prepared for war in Europe on the roads, across the fields, and in the pubs of southern England.
Finally, years of preparation gave way to action in June 1944, as Allied forces landed in Normandy. The boys from Alberta became hardened professional soldiers in the rubble of towns with names like Caen and Falaise, as they broke out of the beachhead to begin the grand sweep into Northwest Europe. Autumn 1944, Highlanders fought a slow and exhausting series of actions northwestwards into Belgium. They confronted German positions commanding the approaches to Antwerp, a harbor desperately needed by the Allies. On a lonely, rain-lashed causeway leading to the Dutch island of Walcheren, the Calgary Highlanders were to fight a battle with courage equaling that of the Fighting Tenth at St. Julian. From October 31st to November 1st, 1944, the Highlanders overcame heavy shell fire to push the enemy off the causeway. Canadian and Allied forces later reclaimed the island and secured the approaches to Antwerp. Ultimately, the Netherlands and the rest of Europe would be liberated, and war would come to an end for those who marched out of Marwata armory doors six years earlier. 403 of them would never return. The regimental colors embody a sense of service and of remembrance. Causeway and St. Julian are but two of many battles whose names are emblazoned as a reminder of the regimental spirit. Today, Calgary's Dutch community gathers annually to recognize the price paid by the Calgary Highlanders and other Canadians who restored liberty to their nation five decades ago. While traditions remain strong in the Calgary Highlanders, technology and skilled people are just as important today. Training and preparedness are the priority. This weaponeer simulator builds confidence by providing in-depth analysis and practice in that most basic of soldierly skills, marksmanship. The need for which has not changed in a world still searching for a new balance to replace the uneasy piece of the superpower confrontation. Okay, weapon on safe. Okay, while well, you're testing and adjusting your position, once you feel comfortable, then switch the weapon to repetition and carry on with practice. And at this point, you're still, you think you like one position. Yeah. Because, like, you know, if I shoot too close with my elbows too close together, man, I'm like, by the time my second shot comes off, I'm shaking all over the place. So I like to spread my elbows. Thank you, Watch your follow through, eh? That does look good. Should have no problem passing PWT at all. Nothing whatsoever. Not a problem. Canada remains committed to long-standing alliances for peace. Targets up! And counting more than ever on its citizen soldiers to fill growing demands for peacekeeping troops. In response, the Calgary Highlanders are placing greater emphasis on training so that they will be ready. My name is Lieutenant Harris, and uh, this evening we're going to talk a little bit about patrolling. Patrolling is a process whereby a detachment of men is sent out across enemy lines, known as the forward edge of battle area, to perform a specific mission. Uh, these missions can be of reconnaissance or combat. Sometimes they're a combination of both. Uh, the reason why the Canadian Forces continues with patrol training is uh, because of our need to support the United Nations peacekeeping tasks. We must be able to process, 
into dangerous areas and gain as much information about movements of certain organizations as we possibly can. Mixing militia volunteers willing to serve full time for a specified period with regular force battalions means Canadians receive a maximum value for their tax dollar. Total force is the name given this integration of reserve and regular forces personnel. The Calgary Highlanders have provided more troops than any other Canadian militia unit for service with UN peacekeeping forces in the former Yugoslavia. The regiment continues a tradition of overseas service by making a difference, just as it did in a war-ravaged Europe 50 years ago. Total force also means new opportunities for employment, training and travel for the Calgary Highlanders. Specialist courses with an emphasis on skill at arms are taught to the same standards expected of regular armed forces members. Misfire, check venturi lock. Misfire, check venturi lock. Venturi lock, check. 45 seconds from here to there to get your six rounds off. Physically fit Canadians, age 17 or older, with a minimum grade 10 education, may become enlisted members of the militia after completing a series of entry requirements. From the prone position, then we'll do advanced standing bursts, is what, what comes up next. We'll advance to a position of about 25 meters from the actual target, so you're right close up there. As you're running down, we'll be repeating Men and women with post-secondary education may be commissioned as officers once they've demonstrated a potential for military leadership. The regiment has a social side as well. Several times each year, members of the officers' mess share legendary Highland hospitality with the city's business and professional community. Ladies and gentlemen, glory to Militia service is a job quite unlike anything else. Strong personal commitment. Physical stamina. Clear thinking under pressure. The Calgary Highlanders, the challenge, the rewards, the regiment today.